Hey everybody, how's it going? I'd like to talk about that video that I did on the iPhone charger in Brazil, where Brazil is saying that they must sell the phone with the charger. I wanted to apologize for a detail that I missed. The detail that I missed in that video is that when I was talking about using your old charger with the new iPhone, that the phone comes with a USB-C to lightning cable, which means that your old chargers, which all use USB-A, the standard big USB plug, would not work with that cable. I should have included that detail in the video, and I apologize for leaving that out of my arguments. You've come to expect better from this channel, and I should be able to provide better. That being said, I'm going to go for even more downvotes in this video than the last one. Are you ready? You're waiting for it. Wait for it. It doesn't change my opinion at all. It doesn't change my opinion at all. The point that I am trying to get across in that video is that when governments go after these companies, they go after them for all the wrong stuff. So let's just take a look at iPhone pricing over the years. So that charging brick, I was taking a look, that charging brick that they did not include with the phone has a cost of $20. Now, if the argument is being made that I would have to purchase this charger, assuming that I don't have the charger and the cable that came with my 5 and 5S and 6 and 6S and 7 and 8 and 10 and 10S and I, so on and so forth, that you would then have to spend an additional $20. And at the point that you need to spend an additional $20, once you spent all this money for the phone, that the government should step in. Let's take a look at iPhone pricing over the years. So you have the iPhone 6 where you could get a 64 gigabyte iPhone 6 for I think 749 bucks when they first came out. And then the iPhone 10 came out where if you wanted a 64 gigabyte one, it was somewhere in the 999 range. So you have the price of the phone going up by about 150 bucks. If you wanted the 10s Max, then you're looking at let's say 1099 for 64 gigs of storage, around 1099. So now you're going up several hundred dollars. Now at the iPhone 12, they brought it down a bit where I think with the iPhone 12, they started at 799, 699 if you want the mini version, if you want the Pro or the Pro Max, then you're going up to 999 and 1099. So we have flagship phones where for just about the same amount, similar amount of storage that you are, you have fluctuations in price of $150 or $200 from year to year. And that's okay. You can raise the price of the phone from this year to this year when you release a flagship, even as cost of production may be going down. You could raise that price by $200. Nobody cares. You could make your new phone in a manner where if you try to replace parts of it, even with genuine parts from another genuine Apple product, that they will not work anymore, as was pointed out on you Jeffries' excellent channel in this video that I highly suggest you check out, that's fine. We have no problem with that. They can release a product that you cannot open and close. They can admit that the product does not work if you open and close it, but then only cover half of them without covering the rest. They can actually change their design admitting that there's a problem because they wouldn't have changed the length of the cable if it wasn't a problem. If it only affected a small percentage of them, then why would you do this when it only affects a small percentage of them? They can create a product in 2017 that you cannot open and close without that product breaking shortly after you purchase it. That's okay. The place where we draw the line is when they don't include the charging brick in the box. That infuriates me. When a company seeks to redefine ownership and take away your ability to fix the product, when they sell a product that is fundamentally defective in a manner that was never advertised up front, it is totally okay for them to charge you, the end user, $500 to $650 to fix their design flaw, give you a three-month warranty so that if four months after you paid them $600 to fix their own design flaw, you have to pay $600 again. That's okay. That's okay. Where we draw the line is when they don't include a charger in the box. That is infuriating. I was actually under the assumption when I did that video that not only was the charging brick not included in the box, but also the charging cable. I made that video under the idea that there was an even greater injustice being done in them not including the charger or the charge cable in the box, meaning that you would have to use one of your old lightning cables. I actually have lightning cables, which blows my mind because I don't use an iPhone. Yet for some reason, I have them in my house. They're everywhere. And I've heard people say that they suck, they break easy. Apple's cables are absolute horseshit. Uh, if you're looking for a lightning cable that's actually good, I used to sell these. I failed at selling them. I was an absolute failure as a salesman. 
These cables are awesome. They are so difficult to break. StarTech makes a cable, uh, it's a lightning cable that is really, 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 really hard to break. Uh, I'll link it down below if I remember to. These are, it's 17 bucks for a cable, which is gonna make most people throw up. But these are cables where you could, these will last for years and years and years. You can abuse the crap out of them. I have some of these cables that I purchased in 2014 that still work, and we abuse cables at the store, believe me. Uh, but the idea here, the point that I wanted to get across with that video is that these companies can absolutely bend you over six ways to Sunday, and it's totally okay. But it's only when they do something that costs you $20 that you know about up front that you may not even have to pay if you're okay using your USB A to lightning charger from your old phone on your current iPhone. That's the point at which we say this is an injustice and legislation must be passed and this must be forced on them. I've spent the last six years lobbying in favor of right to repair. I have provided testimony where I have truthfully spoken the fact that if I try to change the, if I try to take the programming off of the chip that reads your battery so that you could tell if you have a battery installed in your computer so it could actually be used as a laptop, that the chip will kill itself. It kills itself. Forcing you to go to the manufacturer to purchase a new one once chips with that programming are no longer available. That's okay. Nobody cares. I have spoken for several years on the fact that they make a computer that because of their own design flaw in 2017 can cost $4,000. It doesn't physically open and close without breaking in a very, very sad way. That is clearly to demonstrate, you could clearly demonstrate it, and they've admitted to it on a very small percentage of their computers. Because remember, the 15 inch 2016 is not covered, 13 inch 2017, 13 and 15 inch 2017 are not covered. No one cares. The area where we draw the line, where we say enough is enough, is when they don't include a charger with the phone. That is $20 for the OEM one, which you don't even need because you can charge it with last year's charger. That blows my mind. It genuinely blows my mind. And like I've seen the, the, thing, the comments saying, these phones are too expensive. People here are poor. They can't afford to purchase a new charger. I am going to get so much shit for this. This video will have more downvotes than upvotes for this comment. But more downvotes than Eric is about to give BlackBerry for just knocking over the box of greenies that's on the fridge. Yeah, she knocked it over. She's, she, I think she got it open, too. If we genuinely care about the impoverished, how about instead of creating legislation that changes what comes in the box of a $1,000 to $1,500 product, we pass legislation that allows them to continue using their old ones. Maybe something that will allow them to fix the devices that go bad when they go bad so they don't need to buy a new one. Wonder if anybody's come up with anything like that. Like maybe Dara, right to repair. Or maybe we focus on the products that this company has released that break very easily in manners that they've admitted are design flaws that they are unwilling to cover unless you pay them five to six hundred dollars with a three month warranty on that five to six hundred dollar repair that will fail again because they're putting in the exact same part with the same design flaw that failed to begin with. It's the charger. The speed at which legislators will pop into action and immediately solve the problem that they did not include a charging brick with this device that you can purchase for $20, which is less than 3% the actual cost of the product you're purchasing, well, that has to be dealt with immediately. And it will be dealt with immediately. They didn't include headphones in the box. We are going to fix that right now. The company tries to redefine the very concept of ownership and remove repair from our culture entirely. Crickets. Who cares? Six years of crickets. If you're broke, if you're at that point in your life where you genuinely can't afford the 20 bucks for the charger, why an iPhone? There are so many phones, like why? Why an iPhone? Why must it be an iPhone 12? I have 16 employees at this point. I have a store in one of the most expensive cities in the United States. I've been a business owner for 12 years. I have a Moto G. This phone costs $140. This is my daily driver. 140 bucks. I'm not broke. I'm not rich either, but I'm not broke. Phone is $140. When I was actually broke, I had a flip phone. Now, am I saying you should be getting by with a flip phone? Absolutely not. But if we're discussing a concern for the impoverished, 
do we have to look at the newest effing iPhone? Do we need the newest iPhone? How much innovation has been put into the iPhone 12 to make it worth that much more than an iPhone 8 or a 7? Or even a 6S, to be honest with you. Smartphone innovation really seems to have kind of gone by the wayside for anything up other than these just tacky features over the past few years. Like, I've had people tell me, but Lewis, they released this feature, and they have that feature. This is It's not exciting. It's just, you know, different color sprinkles on the ice cream cone. It's not stuff that just genuinely gets me excited. So if I'm broke, I'm not spending 1200 or 2000 Brazilian on a phone. I realize that the, the Brazilian currency has gone down more than many other countries' as currency since the pandemic. So the phones are going to become even more and more and more expensive in Brazil. I'm not saying you got to buy a Moto G because this, this, this thing is slow. But do we need to be purchasing a 1200 or 1300 or $1,500 phone. Like, is that, is that the best way to spend your money when you're broke? Yeah. I'm at the point, where, and it, like, it makes me sick to use the I word. I feel physically ill when someone uses the I word on me. But I've gotten to that point of being an influencer. Scratched up Moto G. Like, it, it, it does the job. I can run my business off of this. I can do stock trades off of this. I can answer customer concerns off of this. I can watch video off of this. I do all the things that I need to do. 140 bucks. I get it. I get that idea that every single year they want to take more money. But at that point, why is the argument that when $20 is added to the price, that's crazy? But when you look at the price that the 6S or the 7 sold at, and then the XS and then the XS Max sold at, and then the 11 and the 12s uh, are selling at, that these price differences are not what triggers a, phones are too expensive nowadays. Like, no legislative body seemed to care when the price of the product went up by 100 or 200 or 300 or 350 for a flagship. I still remember the good old days when a flagship smartphone was 600 bucks. Now a flagship smartphone is 1200 1300 and up from there. It's when there's a $20 charger that the world loses its mind. Downvote away. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Stay salty.